My name is Chris Rywald. I've been playing D&D on and off since uh, fifth grade, um, which was about 1981 when uh, I got my friends at school together and uh, I ran Keep on the Borderlands and managed to kill the entire party before they actually entered the dungeon. So uh, my funny story, uh, back when I was in college, um, I saw an, uh, an advertisement for the school was running an egg drop contest. Now, if you've never been to engineering school or involved in STEM activities, maybe you don't know, but STEM people love to do this thing where you take an uncooked egg and you drop it off of a tall building or a object of some kind and, uh, and see if it can survive. You build a contraption and um, maybe you wrap it in bubble wrap or something like that and you see if you can get the egg to survive. Well. Um, it turns out it's actually really easy because eggs are tougher than you think they are. Uh, but, um, I wasn't really interested in trying to successfully drop an egg off a building. It seemed a little too easy. But when I was looking at the categories, there was, uh, survivability, of course, aesthetic quality, which is a little too, um, uh, judgment based for me, a little too, a little too subjective. And, uh, and most impressive failure. And I thought that is something to aim for. So I spent the night before the egg drop contest filling a condom with two gallons of lime green jello and tucking an egg neatly inside. So the morning of the contest, I arrived with my entry. Um, other people had come up with things. There was the, the one student who was into Taco Bell and he had put his egg inside a soft taco. Somebody else had built like a lovely little sort of geodesic star thing with the egg hung in the middle. Very elegant and beautiful. And uh, somebody else had attached a spinning arm to a barbell um, with the egg at the end uh, to absorb, I guess, angular momentum or something. I don't know. Um, it, was a, it was a pretty interesting group. And, um, and I got to go pretty close to the end. Here we were about five stories up, uh, dropping it out of a dorm window. And uh, I heard the announcers announce my creation, which I had creatively named two gallons of lime green jello in a condom. Uh, and as I approached the window, I gave myself a moment to imagine that the egg might actually survive this trip. And uh, I reached the window and I watched as everyone took two steps back from the landing zone and I knew it wouldn't be enough. So I released the condom and it fell the five stories and exploded on impact, spattering the judges with lime green jello. Parked cars 50 feet away were hit with jello. I will remember everyone frozen in horror as the lime green jello exploded across all of them. That's how I like to remember them. Uh, so now I'm going to uh, read the side. This is it, the room to which all paths lead, and though seemingly empty, its presence is astounding. High vaulted ceilings of stone rise above you. Stalactites big enough to crush you hang threateningly overhead. And at the center of this room is a whirling vortex of water and noise, a lake corrupted by magic that swirls in constant motion, threatening to devour anything that cannot fight its powerful currents. But you are unable to simply witness the majesty of this room for long. From the depths of the lake, a creature emerges. Not just any creature, the creature. From first glance, you can tell that this was your quarry all along, though even now your minds cannot fully comprehend what it is. And lastly, I'm going to uh, choose the character, which is the uh, gif with the firearm. And uh, I think that his name would be Hipparchus Estonia. And he is a gif with a hard G, not a soft G. It's a gif. Um, he's a gunslinger and he's a pirate of books on philosophy from all the planes of existence. I'm your worst nightmare, a hippo with a blunderbuss. And if you haven't dreamed of me yet, you will soon. <laughs>